What's going on guys and I'm back here today on the John Check Sports Media Network to finally discuss some baseball. Yes, the playoffs are upon us. We have, um, the other day was the last day of the Tigers, uh, I'm going to touch on some Tigers here for a couple minutes there. It was the last day of the Tigers season and you know, I was actually legitimately bummed. Uh, that it was the last day of the season. You know, like, I know how bad they've been. I know how brutal their offense has been. Or not their offense, but how brutal of a manager Brad Ausmus has been. I know how brutal their bullpen's been. I know how brutal their starting pitcher's been. Key word, just how brutal in general the Tigers have been. But let me tell you something. Come Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, you know, I watched them during uh, football. Because, you know, I watch football pretty much every game. I was actually a little sad to finally be like, you know something? I know these guys suck. I know it's been hard to watch. But damn it, this is my team. They're my Tigers. I love the. I love this team. I love watching them play. Baseball is one of my passions. You know, I you guys have watched me for a long time. And you guys know how much I love the, the Tigers. I do. You know, I love football. But, you know, the Tigers, man. I was sad to see them go. But you know something? I'm going to do a Tigers video here. Uh... Sometime in the, to preview the upcoming offseason, probably sometime towards the end of the postseason. So, let's get right on to it, the postseason. That's right. It's here. Wild Card Baseball Round 1 begins for the one-game playoff. Now, if you're an NL team, how awful is it that you got 95-plus wins and one of you guys are going to be gone? That's, that's one thing about this one-game playoff that's so unfair. Any one of the top three teams in the NL Central would have had the best record in the American League by like five games over the Royals. Because the Royals, I think, had 90 or 91 wins. It's just nuts how good that NL Central was this year. It's just crazy. Cubs 95-win team. I think they, they finished the season on an eight-game winning streak. Pirates, you know, they nearly came close to catching um, St. Louis for the division. And then St. Louis made injury after injury, They're you know, and they win 100 games. They're an absolutely studly team. So let's begin. Let's talk about the American League wild card first. The one-game playoff is going to be between the Astros and the Yankees. Now, game 162 was very, very interesting. The, the Angels came in. Uh, Angels and Astros came into the last day of the season. Angels needed an Astros loss. And a victory to overtake the the Astros as the second wild card winner. Now, the Astros needed the Angels to lose, or the Rangers to win, or they win, and they would clinch the wild card spot. What happened was Cole Hamels, Cole Hamels, excuse me, goes up against Garrett Richards. Garrett, the Angels get an early lead, two run homer by Albert Pujols. Garrett Richards is looking good through three. Gets to the fifth inning, and then all of a sudden, the Angels blew up. Texas ends up dumping a nine spot on them in the three innings afterwards, and the Angels lose 9-2. to two. So none of this magic where the Angels come back from five runs in the ninth this time. Um, and the Angels ended up losing. They made it close. And then the Astros, who dominated the Diamondbacks that uh, that, that series, they beat them like 21-2 to two, uh, their first game of that series. And then the second game of that series, they beat them pretty handily again. Um and then the third game, the Diamondbacks shut them down, and the Astros lost, but it didn't matter. And it was kind of weird watching the Astros, you know, they just lose uh, a game to the Diamondbacks, and A.J. Hinch is in there, yeah, uh, good job, guys, yeah, nice, yeah, nice seeing you, good job, good job, you know, it's like, and then they go spray each other champagne, it's like, you just lost. Uh, <laughs> so I had, it was a little weird, but nonetheless... Astros and Yankees. It's going to be Dallas Keuchel against Masahiro Tanaka in Yankee Stadium. Now, Tanaka's last start was skipped, um, but Tanaka's been good. He's been really good besides that skipped start. Um, and there'd be no CC Sabathia for the postseason either for the Yankees if the Yankees do advance. Uh, he checked himself into alcohol rehab, uh, which is good for him because, I mean, you know, I've, I've battled with stuff before, uh, not drugs or alcohol, but other things, you know, and. Uh, it's not easy when, when you can admit a, admit a default with something and then you know, look at it head on in the battle. You know, there's there's things I struggle with, you know, every single day, like, you know, my weight, for example. You know, I was a, a guy that was 340 pounds, you know, and, and I struggle to maintain the way I am right now due to, you know, lack of metabolism and, and whatnot else. 
So, you know, I, it's something I battle with and I will battle with for the rest of my life to try to, to stay, you know, I guess you could call call me thin, um, even though I'm kind of pudgy. Um, but to look the way I do, you know, I battle with it. So I, I respect CC Sabathia a lot, you know, to come out and admit your fault like that. So, you know, kudos to him and uh, I hope he gets uh, help with his battle through his struggle. Um, nonetheless, um... Keuchel is going to a park where, you know, the, the Yan Yankees are really lucky that they got home field advantage. Now, a lot of people, there is points that home field advantage does not matter in, ba in baseball. But when you got Dallas Keuchel, who did not lose once at home this entire year, and the guy had an ERA of, I think, of like sub-150 at home, I mean, he was amazing there. The, the Yankees, it was paramount that they got the home field advantage over the Astros, um... And especially considering, you know, it's at, it's at a, a more hitter-friendly ballpark in Yankee Stadium with that short right field porch. Now, I was watching MLB Network earlier today, and they're making the point that should the Yankees play some of their left-handed hitters, you know. And they were making the point they absolutely need to. In a one-game playoff, you know, with some of the Yankees' best hitters are left-handed hitters. They have no choice but to start them against Keiko, who, you know, has done a good job shutting down left-handed hitters. Um, and, you know, he is, if he's going to win in any kind of park, you know, in a park where fly balls, you know, are turned into home runs, uh, you know, crappy fly balls, you, you know, he's the guy to do it. He's the guy that, you know, he's got, he's, gets a lot of strikeouts for a sinker baller, but he's a sinker ball guy, gets the ball put on the ground a lot, so he keeps the ball out of the air, which is exactly what you need to do at Yankee Stadium. And the Yankees are a predominantly left-handed hitting lineup team. You know, some of their best hitters, you know, Didi Gregorius was good in the second half, and you got Jacoby Ellsbury and Brian McCann. Um, you know, some of your, your better two hitters, Greg Bird is a, a left-handed hitter. So, you know, it, it works out for them that, you know, uh, or for Keiko that some of their best hitters are left-handed guys. And Alex Rodriguez, um, it was he kind of limped into the postseason. He didn't have that good of a last month and a half. And they're out without Mark Teixeira. And the Yankees really as a whole didn't play good baseball uh, in the last month of the year at all. So... But if I have to pick someone to win this game, you know, Keiko, he's been good, but, you know, he's he's beatable on the road, and he's got to have an amazing game. So if I'm going to pick a team to, to win this, I think i got to go the Yankees, simply for the fact that I don't trust the Astros' bullpen. The Astros' bullpen, after being very, very good for a good chunk of the season, has been very suspect in the second half. And you look at the Yankees, you know, they get a, they got a night, they, their offense, you know, it hasn't been as good as it was. But, you know, I think if they get a slim lead, you get the ball to Wilson, Batances, Miller, it's ball game, you know, and everyone's going to be able to go. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll use a guy need be to get him to get him through if, if Tanaka comes out and starts laying a dud. I mean, you know, I guarantee you Adam Warren will be available, you know, for them to pitch or, you know, they need to, uh, Von Nova will be available to pitch, you know, they need to, they'll, they'll go all out to try to win this one game, you know, to advance in the postseason. So I'm going to take the Yankees to beat the Astros. You know, the Astros are a young team. Who knows how they play under pressure? You know, they, they've kind of, they're another team, didn't finish out the year extremely strong. I mean, this was a team that one time was commanding the AL West and ended up faltering to Texas. They don't play good. They don't win out on the road either. That's another reason why I'm going to take the Yankees to win it. Keiko is, you know, he's been good on the road, but he's been more hittable. And the Astros just don't win on the road. So that's why I'm going to take the Yankees bullpen at home. I'm going to take them to, to beat the, the Astros. And then the wild card for the NL, Pittsburgh and Chicago. Wow, what a game. I implore everyone watching this video to watch that game. If you don't watch that game, you are missing out on one of the best one-game wild card games potentially the Revel would be. You got Garrett Cole, who had a nasty year, on a team that's gotten ousted in the one game wild card, you know, a couple of times already. But on a team that, you know, is such a great, well rounded team, you know, I love the Pirates, I really do. But then they're going up against the Chicago Cubs team. Very young, very, very young. But boy, has Joe Madden molded that team into something amazing. You know, Chris Bryant, great year. Addison Russell, you know, I love him. Good defender. You know, the bat really isn't, I don't think, where it'll be over the course of his career. But, you know, a good, def good defender. Nonetheless, he gets it done in the bottom of the lineup. Anthony Rizzo had a great year. You know, Kyle Schwarber, he was up and down after his really torrid start. But, you know, he's a quality player. Um, Dexter Fowler, you know, he had a, a pretty decent year at the top of their lineup. 
Jorge Soler. I mean, they're a great team. Their bullpen is suspect, yes. But God, man, did Joe Madden do great work with that team this year? He just he was just outstanding with them. And then you got Jake Arrieta, who in MLB history, history, posted the lowest ERA ever. Think about that. In the history of baseball, post All Star break, posted the lowest ERA ever in the second half. He had a .78 ERA. Then at one point, how many eight inning starts he had? He had a no hitter. I mean, the, the guy was unhittable. It's not even fair how good he is. And he's going up against Garrett Cole. You got two young teams, two studs on on your on the on the mound going for one another. Runs are gonna be at a premium. Winner take all, do or die in Pittsburgh. Oh my god. I don't even know how to even call this game. I don't even know. I, I don't even want to say who's going to win this game because it's it's so evenly matched and so up in the air. But, Jake Arrieta, that boy's been some kind of unreal. He has been some kind of unreal here in the second half. I'm not going to go against him. To I don't care what lineup. He no-hit the Dodgers. I don't care what lineup he is facing. Who's at the plate? Arietta is in some kind of groove where it could be Babe Ruth up there and he's getting him out. That is how locked in and how much of a groove that Arietta has been in this second half. Which is why I'm going to take the Cubs to yet again, the Pirates are going to falter again in the wild card game. You know, too bad. I mean, you're a 95 win squad and you're going to get bounced again. I'm sorry, but I'm, I got to go with the Cubs. The Cubs, man, Arietta is just too good. And with Bryant and Rizzo, you know, those guys just studs in the middle of your lineup. And then their supporting cast. I don't, I no need to name them. I have faith, all the faith in the world. And, you know, with how deep Arietta's been going into games, that suspect Cubs bullpen, I don't think is going to play as big a factor. You know, I think with, that, with how good Arietta's been, you know, that's, he's going to be all right. So, my wild card winners. Cubs defeating the Pirates, Astros defeating the or the Yankees defeating the Astros, and then we go into the first round: Texas versus Toronto. Texas, great story. You know, I like what they did. You know, they came out of nowhere. You know, a lot of guys had bounce back years. Sinsu Chu had a bounce back year. Prince Fielder had a great bounce back year. Mitch Moreland had a great year. And then, you know, they picked up Mike Napoli, who uh, hit some big homers for him. And then, you know, they got Josh Hamilton, a nice player to come off the bench, even though you know, he's a shell of what he used to be. And then the rotation, though, it's, it's Cole Hamels and who else? I mean, Colby Lewis, okay, you know, but you know, then you got Derek Holland and whatnot. But you, it's going to take just more than Cole Hamels to beat the Toronto Blue Jays. And I think with how good of an offense that the Toronto Blue Jays have, when you, when you think about this, you got the Texas Rangers who don't have the deepest pitching staff in the world going up against a team that has Jose Bautista, Josh Donaldson, Edwin Encarnacion, all three of those guys in the lineup, all nearly all three of those guys had 40 home runs and 100 plus RBIs. These are guys that mash. These are guys that hit mistakes. These are guys you have to pitch carefully to. And Cole Hamels can only win you so many games in a, in a, in a five game series. So I don't think Texas has a chance of winning more than one game in this series. And that's, you know, Cole Hamels when he starts in game three or four. I think that's it. Because I think the Rangers are the, the Blue Jays are going to absolutely pulverize them with their offense, and they got Marcus Stroman back. The the Blue Jays do, and now they got David Price, who m- might be the American League Cy Young winner this year, to go along with Stroman, to go along with Dickey. Their the rotations, <laughs> what used to be looked upon as you know, a weak rotation is not looked is not that bad whatsoever anymore. And then their bullpen was really good after the, all the trades. Took a step back in September, but I think they got enough. You know, Azuna is a stud in the back end. I like him a lot. You know, he's he's really proved his worth in the back uh, in the back end of that bullpen. So I'm gonna take Toronto to beat Texas in four, and then we got the National League. Oh my God, <laughs> the Mets and the Dodgers. I mean, it's it gets me giddy just thinking about this. You got Jacob Degrom going game one. 
Clayton Kershaw coming up a 301 strikeout season. But okay, okay, okay. Following him is Zach Grinke, a guy that led the, the, the NL in ERA. And then the Mets. Harvey took off all the kid gloves. He's good to go. He says, give me the ball, Skip. Any limits are off, I guess. But then I got DeGrom. Then you got Harvey. Then you got Syndergaard. Those three guys going. My goodness. And then these lineups. Puig is supposedly coming back for the postseason. And then you got Agon in there. You know, I I, I love him. And then you got, you know, uh, Seeger and, you know, Utley and Rollins and just what what lineups you got. And then and then the Mets. You want to talk about a lineup. Cespedes completely revamped that lineup. Since they got Cespedes, they were one of the best hitting clubs in the NL. And now with Cespedes, Granderson had a, you know a nice power year this year, and Lucas Duda got really hot towards the end, and David Wright you know back one hundred percent healthy, uh, you know, wow, just wow, what a, what a great great matchup this is going to be. Now both teams, uh, the Mets, you know they did a nice job fixing up their bullpen. The Dodgers have some bullpen questions, yes. Um, I think the Mets though are a better team than the Dodgers without a doubt. Um, the reason why I'm going to take the Mets to beat the Dodgers, even with Kershaw and Grinky, there's no one after Kershaw and Grinky. I mean, who are you going to trust? Alex Wood or Mike Bolsinger or Brett Anderson? You know, I'm sorry. The, the Mets' pitching depth, yes, they're 1 and 2. The, the Dodgers 1 and 2, easily outnumbers. The Mets 1 and 2. But their depth is going to is going to surpass the, what the Dodgers have. They do. And I think and the Mets are a better hitting team than the Dodgers as well too. I will take the Mets lineup over the Dodgers lineup any day of the week. You know, and I, and I like the Mets bullpen too. You know, Jerry's Familia had a great year and then they ended up getting Tyler Clippard to, to end up backing him up as well and he's done great work since coming over. So I'm just, you know, and then what we saw from Clayton Kershaw in the postseason. You know, he had that five-run lead last year to the Cardinals and he blew it. You know, in a game he should have won. So you know the the the, the Dodgers postseason they they've been suspect the you know the last couple of years they've getting they got bounced because you know because Ker, uh, Kershaw you know he just can't win in the playoffs and who knows how Grinky's gonna do so I'm gonna take the Do the the Mets to to beat the Dodgers you know I, I like the rotation more that team is just completely different with Cespedes in there and I like their bullpen I think they're they're probably arguably the most complete team in the NL this year so I'm gonna take the Mets to. Uh, to beat the Dodgers. So, so far, AL is looking like this. It would be Toronto advancing against Texas in the ALCS. Yankees advancing to the Royals in the ALDS. Or, my, my mistake. The AL, the, I got the Yankees advancing to the ALDS to face the Royals. The Blue Jays would advance to the ALCS. And then I got the Mets beating the Dodgers to go to the NLCS, and then the wild card winner would be the Cubs to play the Cardinals. So let's move on to the ALDS, or the ALDS, Yankees and Royals. Royals, I there's there's just Yankees. You know they're they're going to be Houston, but they're going to have to face Kansas City, who's got a much uh, you know um, the rotation is is very suspect. Cueto was not that good. When he came, uh, when he came over, he's just he had a really bad five star stretch there. But the Royals, that team, what they got a, a offensive, a, just I can't even. Alex Gordon, Mike Mustakis, Lorenzo Cain, Eric Hosmer, Salvi Perez. They just they got a squad that plays outstanding defense. They got a squad that can hit this year. The rotation is suspect, but that bullpen is legit. And I think it's going to be too much for the Yankees to overcome, even though the Royals didn't have that great of a last month of the season. I think the Royals easily beat the Yankees, so my ALCS will be Blue Jays, Royals. Now, the NLDS, Cubs, Cardinals, this is hard. Very, very hard. They're, I don't think Carlos Martinez is going to be available for the postseason. I think he's done for the year. And they think they're getting back Yachty. Now, here's where it comes in a question. You're losing arguably your ace of the staff right now in Carlos Martinez. You know, he's been their frontline guy. I know you still got Michael Waka and everything else there. But you got a, a Cardinals team 
that is very postseason savvy. They're there every year. You know, they just they they just do nothing but continuously make it every single year. You got back Matt Holiday and whatnot, and you got guys like Matt Carpenter who had a great year this year power wise. He was really good. You know, Matt Carpenter and Matt Adams and Johnny Peralta and Colton Wong, and especially if you get back Yachty, that's a big help. You know, Randall Gritchick had a, a really good year, you know, with the Cardinals, a really, really good year. And then Jason Hayward and whatnot, and you know, their bullpen's not bad. But I I'm going shocker here. I am so on board with what the Cubs are doing. When you got Arietta and then you got Lester, a guy that beat the Cardinals when he was a Red Sox, you got a postseason guy and and Lester that just knows how to win in the in the postseason, and you got Arietta at the top, Jason Hamill. You know he's not a bad guy. You know a third guy in the rotation. I know fourth and you know the fourth guy I think would be Kendrick. I think is the guy's name. Um, not Kendrick. What the hell is that guy's name? Richards. I think is his name. Richard. Oh, he's a kid. I don't know. Um, I've watched him pitch before. He's not that good. I, I don't think his name is. There is a, a Cubs pitcher named Clayton Richard, but I'm trying to think of their fourth starter. He's some guy that throws like 88, 89 miles an hour. I thought it was Kendrick, but I, I know I'm wrong here. Uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, I like what the Cubs got one through three, and I like the Cubs offense a little more than I like the Cardinals offense. But I just think with Arietta and Lester they'll be able to overcome anything that the Cardinals can throw out at them. I just truly do. You got your dominant righty, you got your dominant lefty right at the top, and then you got that lineup, and then you're facing a banged-up Cardinals team. That's why I'm going to take the Cubs to beat the Cardinals. And it's it almost seems like blasphemy to say that because I know how tried and true and battle-tested the Cardinals are. I mean, think about it. They won 100 games with a battered team as it is. But there's just something about this Cubs team. I don't know what it is. I just got this feeling about him. I got to ride him out. And I'm going to take the Cardinals or the Cubs to upset the Cardinals and advance to the NLCS. Now, the ALCS, Rangers, or not Rangers. Why do I keep screwing this up, man? I don't know what I'm doing today. Blue Jays and Royals. Blue Jays. I'm just, the rotation, the top of the rotation, to me, I just trust more than what I trust out of the Royals. You know, Cueto, if he would have came out and dominated and showed me he can be a guy he can hand the ball to, that he's going to shut down American League lineups, okay, I'd have no problem with this. But the Royals went up to Toronto after they got uh, Troy Tulowitzki and uh, Dave Price, and they got smacked. And, you know, I don't, when you're facing a lineup with the hitters that Toronto can throw at you, and you're facing it with a lackluster rotation, I know how good their bullpen is, and I know how good the Royals' offense is, I think you're just going to get down too fast, too quick, and you're not going to be able to utilize your strengths of holding slim leads and getting to your pen. So I'm going to take Toronto to go to the World Series and up and beat Kansas City. With that offense, with Stroman and Price at the top, they're going to score more than enough runs, and I think their pitching staff is just good enough to overtake what Kansas City can do. And especially considering... Alex Gordon and uh, Eric Hosmer, two of the Royals' best hitters, are lefties, and you got David Price. You know it's your number one. So that factors into it too. He's going to shut them down. So I'm going to take Toronto to advance the World Series. Now it would be Cubs and Mets. And wow, this this is hard. This is so hard because you want to talk about pitching staffs and young teams. And just a slew of great players going at it with one another. This is just, this is so hard. You know, like I said, with Arietta and Lester at the top of the rotation, you know, like I said, bears repeating how good Arietta's been in the second half when you got big game in Lester, big game guy in Lester. This is a hard one to choose. But I think with, with Harvey and DeGrom, and Syndergaard. Now, Syndergaard, for me, there's one thing I do want to mention. Syndergaard does not win very much on the road. He didn't get his first road victory ever until the Mets played against the Orioles at Camden Yards. He plays a lot better at home than he does on the road. But I think what I love Jacob DeGrom, I love Matt Harvey, and I love Noah Syndergaard. And I think in a, in a seven-game series, you know, the Mets pitching with their depth might outdo the Cubs. And I think this is where the Cubs fall. Like I said, they're, they're you know, 
Ariadne and Lester are great, but I think three four is where the Mets can overtake it. You know, with with the with the depth they got, and on top of, they're probably they might have Stephen Matz coming to be available in the bullpen to pitch to, and they'll have Bartolo Colon to be able to pitch to. So that just even strengthens up their pitching staff in the back end as well. So and they got that Verrett kid as well. So um. I got to go the Mets in seven games over the Cubs. And it pains me to say. It pains me to say because I want the Cubs to win the World Series this year. Cubs or Mets, I want them one of the, That's who I'm pulling for, the Cubs or Mets to win the World Series. Because they're great stories, especially the Cubs. Can you imagine they finally end that drought this year? It would be amazing. It would be phenomenal. But I just think with the Mets and, and their rotation, their depth is a little bit better. And I think with that cesspitous led offense, we've saw how quickly the Mets can strike, especially with Duda getting hot at the end, especially with Granderson's uh, homer power this year. I think, you know, they strike quick and they strike fast and they could surprise the Cubs, get them in a hole early, and then a DeGrom or a Harvey just take over. So I'm going to take the Mets to go to the World Series. And then it would be the Blue Jays and Mets in the World Series. And I'm going to take... This is hard because I don't know if I want to take the Blue Jays or the Mets here. But I'm going to take the New York Mets to win the World Series this year. The New York Mets, I, I there's just something about that team. Jonas Espes did something to it. There were, you know, with Matt Harvey coming on saying he wants to pitch in the playoffs, you know, he wants the ball. I think that the Mets, you know, their their, their rotation is better than the better than the Blue Jays. And I think Big offenses get shut down in in uh, by very good pitching staffs in the postseason. Prime example: 2012 World Series. Tigers had the Triple Crown winner Miguel Cabrera, yes, playing hurt. Prince Fielder, you know, two just two of the ferocious bats in another lineup. But look what happened: their offense died, and they they got shut out one game and scored one run the next. I mean, Cabrera got destroyed. Fielder got destroyed. Peralta was gone. Infante was gone. I mean, Hunter didn't do anything in the postseason. So, uh, or not Torrey Hunter. Torrey Hunter didn't come until next year. What am I talking about? Um, so, for me, that's what it is. I, I just think that the Mets, the pitching staff is so good that they will neutralize the Toronto bats somewhat. Because you're not going to keep those bats quiet enough. Uh, quiet for too long. You got to do what you can and score enough runs and then limit the damage when they do strike. So for me, I got the Mets winning the World Series. I think they'd win it in six games over the Blue Jays. I just think the rotation's a bit deeper. Their offense is like a snake. It can strike you and hit you for big runs real quick. And I think that their pitching staff is good enough. Unlike, you know, the Royals pitching staff, unlike the Yankees pitching staff, you know, that is good enough to hold the Blue Jays offense in somewhat check long enough. To uh to gain to get victories and uh, yeah, so that's that's my predictions. Um, Mets over Mets over Blue Jays for the for the World Series. So yeah, what? But let me tell you guys, you guys have to watch the postseason. You have to the NL postseason this year. And I've come on my this channel before and already talked about the NL postseason this year is some of the best most quality baseball I, I matchups and teams I can remember in ten years. I can't remember a postseason where you got three pitching staffs in the Cardinals, Dodgers, and Mets, and even the cut and the Cardinals. Four quality pitching staffs, like there is, that's going to be featured. Now the AL part of it, the AL side of it, is you know a little bit more offensive heavy. You know the pitching staffs aren't as good. Um, it's going to be a little bit more bash bash fest. But the NL side of it, you know, wow. Just amazing pitching staffs and amazing matchups, and I can't wait for it. The AL, you know, it's it's going to be good, but I think Toronto is going to run the gauntlet a little bit e pretty easily in the AL. You know, I think they're just that much better than everyone. But the NL, you know, I'm probably going to be dead wrong in the NL who makes it. Watch it be uh, the the Dodgers come out of nowhere, Clayton and, and Grinky, you know, have an amazing postseason where no one can beat them. Or watch the the Cardinals, you know, just do what they do, make it to the World Series seemingly every year. Or watch the Pirates go on an amazing run, you know. That's what I got. I got the Mets winning the World Series, guys.
So that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry about the length. I know that I run, ran a little bit long, but I wanted to get my thoughts on there. And I will come back and I will break down every single series uh, that happened in the postseason. I just wanted to give my general thoughts, who I thought was going to do what. But I will come on uh, once the wild cards are over to actually preview the, ALC, uh, the ALDSs and whatnot. Um, and the NLDSs and whatnot uh, after the wild cards happen. We'll talk about the wild card games in a couple days. Have a good one, guys. See you later.